Let's take a look at this problem. For natural numbers a, b, and c, solve the equation a factorial times b factorial equals a factorial plus b factorial plus c squared. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. For this equation, I'm going to use two tricks. The first one is to factorize, try to factorize to establish some factors on either expressions related to a, a factorial, b factorial, or c squared. The second thing that I'm going to do is to test for some solutions which should be motivation for me to establish some bound say if a is larger than some number then this equation will have no solution so I'm going to start with my first trick firstly I'm going to move a factorial and b factorial to the left hand side so this equation will become this now to make left hand side factorizable I'm going to add one on both sides and left hand side will then become a factorial minus 1 times b factorial minus 1 equals c squared plus 1 so from these two steps I've managed to separate a factorial and b factorial and now I can start to consider factors of c squared plus 1 I'm going to prove a claim which is that for any odd prime let's call it p that divides c squared plus 1 then we we can tell that b, p must be congruent to 1 mod 4 that's all we know about the prime factors of c squared plus 1 apart from 2 well at this stage we can quickly see that a factorial plus 1 and b factorial minus 1 are most of the time to be odd numbers mostly odd so that means c squared plus 1 is an odd number so um, it will be sufficient for us to just consider odd prime factors of c squared plus 1 to prove this we say that for c squared plus 1 to be congruent to 0 mod p, where p is an odd prime, c squared is congruent to minus 1 mod p. Now I'm going to bring both sides to its p minus 1 over 2 power. Which is possible because p is odd, so p minus 1 must be even, and so p minus 1 over 2 must be an integer. Then left hand side will become c to the p minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 to the power p minus 1 over 2 mod p. Now, clearly, because p only divides c squared plus 1 but not c, so c and p must be co-prime. And we now recall the Fermat's little theorem. c to the p minus 1 must be congruent to 1 mod p. So therefore, minus 1 to the power p minus 1 over 2 must be congruent to 1 mod p. And I can move the 1 to the other side, and I have this. Now notice that p is at least 3, and the difference between the powers of negative ones is at most 2. So that means this number, which is congruent to 0 mod p, does not act, is not really a multiple of p, but it must be 0. And that means p minus 1 over 2 has to be an even number. And this will tell us that p is congruent to 1 mod 4. So the claim is done. 
So that's all we can tell at this point with my first trick. And now I'm going to take a look at the second um, second thing that I can do. I'm going to test for some small solutions and after checking, I realized that I will get a solution when A is 3 and B is 2. Okay, this is one of the solutions but not all of them. So this motivates me to think about whether uh, something will happen when say A is at least 4. So by symmetry, I can say with the, loss, with the loss of generality, some people say W log, some people say wall log, and they are both the same actually. I assume that A is larger than or equal to B, so that means by symmetry, I assume that A is a larger number. Then, for in the case A is at least 4, I know that a factorial minus 1, b factorial minus 1 must be odd. So they only have odd prime factors. And now, because c squared plus 1 only has odd prime, uh, odd prime factors of the form 4k plus 1, So because both sides have to be equal, we know that a factorial minus 1, b factorial minus 1 must also only have odd prime factors of the form 4k plus 1. And in other words, a factorial minus 1 must be congruent to 1 mod 4 because all these prime factors are congruent to 1 mod 4 so when they multiply it will only give 1 mod 4. However, when a is larger than or equal to 4, a factorial starts to be con is congruent to 0 mod 4. This part starts to be congruent to 0 mod 4. That's something special about factorials is that um, once it's congruent to 0 mod something, as the number is increases, like the a increases, this property will never change anymore. Congruent to 0 minus 1 mod 4, which is congruent to minus 1 mod 4, and that's clearly a contradiction. Contradicting the fact that um, a factorial minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 4, and now we have found that it's actually minus 1 instead. So that means no solution for a at, to be at least 4, and it remains to check the case that a and b are 3, 3, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, and 1, 1. Six cases remaining. One more thing is that we cannot have any of the a or b to be 1, because if that happens, let's put a remark here, if a equals to 1, then b factorial equals 1 plus b factorial plus c squared, and then c squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's clearly a contradiction, or no, I should say no solution, and similar for b equals 1. So I'm going to remove these three cases, so we only check um, the other three. When a, b are both three, then c squared plus one equals three factorial minus one times three factorial minus one, which is 25. So c squared equals 24, and that's no solution. That's not a solution. For 3, 2, then c squared plus 1 is 3 factorial minus 1 times 2 factorial minus 1, which is 5. Then c squared is 4, and we can say that c equals to 2. And finally, for 2, 2, c 
c squared plus 1 is just 1. So c is 0, which is not a solution here because c has to be a natural number. So therefore, we have only have two sets of solutions, which is 3, 2, 2. And of course, we can reverse the permutation. 2, 3, 2. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.